Mark Daniel Nelson here with Make My Music. We have a first here today, as I've been getting many, many emails the last year or two about doing a open box. I want to give you a little bit of history about what this could be. This was developed in 1978. It wasn't the first, but it was the most famous, and it was designed by Dr. David Greensgird. Now, I know a lot of these people that do these open box stuff have these really fancy flip blade knives and stuff, but I'm going to use the old school way. I haven't seen this in person yet, so this is going to be just as new for you as it is for me. This guy was completely rebuilt, being built in 1978 and being the technology that it was at the time, I'm glad that it was because obviously we know that technology-wise now can go quickly south and then can be completely left behind when it comes to parts and stuff. Right, Atticus? So I have to be very careful to not cut into the pieces of equipment when I'm cutting through this. I've seen a handful of these open box, whatever they call it, and they've actually damaged what they've been doing. The first time I remember hearing one of these in person was when I was 19. And obviously the first thing I saw was the counterpart, Buddy, side captain, to this whole elaborate thing. And I just remember going through this moment of like, okay, that's the most familiar thing I can think of when it comes to reverb. It just reminded me of everything I grew up with. It was very, very, very signature. And to be honest, I never felt like I was able to get one because even then, 20 years ago, this thing was really hard to get, and the ones that did work, they seemed to have problems, and they were expensive. Hey. Okay. We've got here a 1978 Lexicon 224. Looks great. The other thing I like about this guy is the idea that it doesn't have rack rails. Now I know it probably did at one time, but I kind of like that because I'm gonna end up putting it over in a area where it doesn't need to be sitting in a rack. Let's see what we got going on on the inside. These buggers were a little tricky because they run off an older computer technology from 1974, I believe. And everything that was designed at that time was not like now where you get a computer that is designed in a way that ends up being completely consistent each time. So if you get two or three computers, they might actually operate a little differently. One might overheat certain areas. That's why you'd always see stuff being modded on these boxes to help manage that. And everything looks fairly great, so I'm ready to dive in, but it looks absolutely immaculate. Now the fun part, let's get this guy out. Atticus. Everyone's kind of seen these LARC LARCs, the remote controls. And the 224, the original one had an interesting controller that was a little different than this one. On the XLs, they started letting you use the big remote control that looked like calculator from 1980s. And my favorite part. It's funny. The technology smells just like that era. It must be the plastic. Super cool.
So I'm going to dive a little bit in, set some stuff up. Let's try this bugger. filter in this. Tiny bit of sub. Now when you're setting these programs, you have banks of all the different settings. So you get Halls, rooms, plates, and some other goodies in there. If I wanted a chamber, I'd go through the rooms and go into the rich chamber, which is program four. Tap that in and see what that goes. It just feels like it goes forever. Let me solo just the reverb. And then combining the two. Let me go through one more setting before we move on to a different instrument. If I just mute the reverb. I mean, this is 1978 technology and it sounds stunning still. funny because every once in a while it sounds like tank almost like a spring and then it gets really glossy glassy digital let's play some guitar through it and hear what that sounds like handles the low end and everything really well. I am clipping it, but it's adding a little bit of that texture with that. For my favorite drum sound on the 224 is the inverse room. This is similar to what the AMS Nonlin does, that it creates almost like a reversed reverb effect. Very glossy, very glassy sounding and really fun for drums. Now if I put the pre-delay in, I can do a really cool kind of time the line thing going on. That's cool. 
Let's pull up one of the long hauls and just go after one of the heads. Program three. Amazing. Here's some low. That's pretty much it today. Um, plenty of time to go over more settings and stuff like that, but this will just get me started and I probably won't be able to sleep tonight because there's just so many settings to dive into and just try to really dig in. But I figured this would be a really cool and fun video to open up and see what we got right out of the box. So thanks for watching and happy mixing.